Hello everyone. In this series, I will walk you through how to configure a three node multi subnet always on cluster. A special part is will not only configure a cluster, I will teach you how to use a single laptop with certain amount of resources which you can use to configure a test Hyper-V cluster. You will configure the network yourself, you will be configuring the domain controller, you will configure a virtual router so that all the networks can talk to each other and we will install Windows 19, you will configure even the cluster. All those steps which are typically not performed by DBN, that's why one of the complaints I have seen by the DBA team members is that they don't understand when something doesn't work in always on, how to troubleshoot the whole scenario. So the idea here is that you'll be able to do the activity all on your laptop from start to end and that way you'll have a very fair idea which port should be upon and how to troubleshoot when a certain, a certain part of always on is not working. Hopefully this tutorial will help you. So let's get going. So start with the agenda. First we'll talk about oral concept, what this idea came from, the background about it. And we'll cover what all aspect of uh, always on you'll be learning from this and then after that i will cover the prerequisite you need to set up something like that on your own laptop or a desktop whatever you have high level steps will cover this video series will have about 14 to 15 videos so we'll cover that and we'll talk about the overall architecture we are building Finally, we'll be talking about consideration compromises we'll have to make when we are doing this exercise. All right, so what will you learn? You will learn how to use your laptop to set up a test lab. The next thing you'll learn is how to install Windows 10. Then we'll talk about configuring and installing Hyper-V. Then you'll learn Windows 2019 Standard Edition installation or evaluation addition installation. Then you'll learn how to use parent and differential drives then to set up a single VM, a parent VM, which we will use it so that um, other VMs will take much less space as the parent is the one which is taking up majority of the OS installable files. Then you will learn how to set up a virtual router which will allow the multiple subnets to connect to each other and as well as each subnet to reach out to the internet. Then you will learn how to configure a 2019 domain controller. Uh, this will be pretty interesting because this is how we'll, this is what we'll be using to configure always on later on. Then you'll learn how to configure three node Windows cluster. And okay, after that you'll learn how to install SQL Server 2019. Then finally, You'll learn how to configure always on and how to do all the testing, how to do the failovers for always on and how the application will continue to be available when there are failovers happening in always on. So let's go next. Well, my name is Prakash Hiras. Before we continue, let me uh, introduce you to myself. I am a senior manager IT in SSNC Technologies. I also run a blog called SQL Features as well as connect me on LinkedIn on prakash at sqlfeatures.com. Now, let's talk about some of the prerequisites you need to perform this tutorial with me. Uh, first, you should have exposure to PowerShell. A basic exposure will do, plus basic DBA experience, or I would say even if you are in IT and looking to learn, always on. Um, from hardware point of view, you're going to need a Windows 10 Pro or Enterprise 64-bit uh, edition, uh, because that's what allows you to create a virtual hard disk and on that, uh, configure Hyper-V Lab. Then from resources point of view, uh, you'll need a 128 GB of SSD space, 16 GB of RAM, and 8 CPU and USB drive with 16 GB. Then you'll need a laptop which supports Hyper-V or a desktop. Uh, finally, you need admin access to the laptops. And then there are two softwares you need to download, Windows Server 2019 Evaluation Edition as well as SQL Server 2019 developer editions. So once we have it ready, we'll get going. I'll show you all the links in the later series of videos, how to download it and how to set it up. So high level steps, uh, this video series seems to be running about 13 videos. So first architecture, that's what we are discussing here. We'll go through the architecture in this video. 
then in the next video we'll be doing a complete failover testing for a three node multi subnet always on i'll walk you through what all the different process how it works and what all we can do there after that third video series we'll talk about scripts and downloads and then we'll install a vm on the laptop then configure hyper v parent disk will create uh, finally, set up a virtual writer, Windows Domain Controller, set up nodes, install SQL 19, configure cluster, configure always on, and finally, multi subnet failover cluster. And this time, you'll be performing all the failovers along with me. As you, if you're following the series, you'll be able to set up always on as it is. All right, so here is at a high level how multi subnet architecture looks like. So we'll be creating a first Hyper V host. We'll give it a name, Windows 10 Demo. This is what the laptop we are looking at. We'll create three network out of it. One is, for example, LAN 10. Second is LAN 20. And these two are internal LANs. And then third one will be LAN 9. So this is something if you have a Wi-Fi on your laptop or Ethernet, either way, it's connected network. You can use it. If you don't have that, no worries. You can actually work with just two NICs which are internal and configure all this on. Done with the host is set up, Hyper-V set up, then we'll create the first VM and set it up as a router. And here is the, how the router configuration should look like. We'll attach all the three NICs so that they can talk to each other and router will take care of that part. And we'll create a domain controller will look like, we'll set up a DNS IP as 10.10.10 10, 10 do. And default gateway should be the one which is coming from the router. And ADDNS would point again back to it, 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 which is Google's DNS. Now we'll create three nodes, TB1, TB2, and TB3. These nodes will have first and second node will have a LAN 10 connected to it. And the third will have LAN 20. This will create a multi-site, always on exposure, where you are having two nodes on the first data center and third node in the different data centers. And how they connect each other and we'll learn how they perform each other when there are a real disaster happen. We'll create a cluster with a name, a CW19TV. The cluster IPs, as it's a multi-site cluster, you'll have one IP in each subnet. So 10, 10, 10, 21, and 20, 20, 20, 21. Finally, we'll create an availability group on top of that. And then, uh, even though availability group do not need a separate IP, the listener will need a separate IP. And listener is what client will be connecting to. So the app, all the application servers will connect to the listener. At any point of time, depends on where the node is, who's the master, listener will either point to first subnet or second subnet. I hope that's clear so far. So consideration compromises. When we look at it, this is test lab. Um, we are ignoring a lot of best practices. We should not because this is not a production, this is a test environment. So a lot of corners will be cutting to expedite the demo because the idea is to teach you how to configure the whole always on cluster and you know, domain controller and the virtual router and Hyper-V setup and all that. So if we get into the weeds of making it literally like production, there will be adding extra four or five videos. So we'll skip it for this. We'll make it simple so you learn always on. Next, we'll talk about, uh, we'll use very simple passwords. Um, we'll disable all the firewalls. We'll use domain admin accounts so that we don't have to worry about granting a specific access to specific users and a specific activity. Install everything on C drive, again, just to keep things simple. Enable RDP and remote access, functional testing, and not performance testing. That's not the goal because we are working with about 16 GB of RAM and 8 CPUs and 100 gig disks. So this is all it should be able to do. Um, if you have a bigger environment, sure, you can literally use it for performance testing. Finally, a couple of unexpected issues you will face. Uh, make sure that you're running PowerShell always in admin mode. If you don't, you'll be getting error messages which are very weird and they don't even tell you why. They are because it doesn't know that it's when it's not running in admin mode, it gives we sometimes different message. So you don't collect it, and that's why the functionality will stop. So make sure that PowerShell is always running as admin mode. Next, uh, can't connect to domain server after adding the DC. So important to reboot the servers 
after the wind control is installed it will require the dc before you can connect to it that's the end of it first session i really appreciate you taking your time with me um here is my blog feel free to connect uh, you'll find all the scripts and every information here and in the next series uh, next video series which should come probably next week sometime i will walk you through the existing always on three node setup and will perform different type of failovers looking forward to see you Thank you.